Hello, welcome to Cerulean Arts Gallery. Tonight we're speaking with Joellen Ross in conjunction with her Cerulean Arts Collective Exhibition, which is on through which is on view now through April 7th. Hello, Joellen. Hello there. Thanks for being here tonight. Oh, thank you for doing this. Sure. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself and and your show. Okay. Um I started making artwork, gosh, over 20 years ago, not having had any arts background other than always liking art and enjoying it. And I've just kept at it because I've enjoyed doing it. Uh, no agenda, no particular plan, just a desire, just an enjoyment of making, making paintings and making uh, things that I like to look at and that I hope someone else will like to look at. I am really, I always have been inspired by architecture and by geometric for, forms um, and also color. So, um, and that definitely shows up in my work. I also, um, in doing my paintings, I don't know if is goal is the right word, but I like them to be ambiguous enough so that someone looking at them will, will see what they want to see and will think what they want to think and hopefully be inspired uh, to think about something or to uh, re remember something from their past, but to have a personal experience of looking at, at the work. So Joellen, but your profession is a psychologist, correct? Yes, yes. And actually, I um, finally realized that there is definitely a link between my painting and my work as a psychologist, as a psychotherapist, in as much as my goal always is to um, help people bring some calm into their lives and to figure out how to make their lives work better and, and how to be more settled. And I find that in my paintings, uh, often I find myself making an image that is calm, that is settled, maybe very colorful, but it's still, there's, there's a settledness to it. Um, and which is what I hope for my patients. So when you're making these, is it always calm and settled or are there times when it's stressful <laughs> and, and frustrating? Well, it's it's, it's <laughs> always stressful and frustrating in as much as I'm, I'm very demanding of myself and I want things to be to be of, of, of quality. But I like that challenge. I like the challenge of, of starting something and then developing it and figuring out how to make it more intriguing, more satisfactory, to have the colors work. Um, so that's always my, so it, it, it's an ongoing process. So when you, when you have an idea for a painting, do you work it out somewhat ahead of time in a sketch or color study, or do you work directly on the canvas? Uh, I do a little of both. Oftentimes, I, I will take a canvas and I'll just put some color on it, basically creating a problem for myself that I have to solve. And then uh, typically I will take a picture of what I'm working on and then go and then uh, using my iPad and, a, and a, an app on my iPad, play around with what I've already started and try out different ideas and then go back to the canvas take more pictures, go back to the iPad, go back and forth. I find that the iPad enables me to do a lot of, to try different ideas and to do editing, to try out different colors. And that you can do it more quickly, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I mean, my, it just, it makes it, um, I, I like the flexibility. And also, um, because I don't start out with a set idea, it allows me to play with, with different ideas.
this this painting and one across the way in the room, uh, both were inspired by visits this summer that we made to two museums that uh, feature minimalist art and have these gorgeous, humongous steel sculptures by uh, Richard Serra. And they're, they're, they're very impressive. They're huge, and yet they don't feel threatening. But the forms are beautiful. Yeah, this like circular shapes are a little different than some. Yeah, yes. Because it's all curved lines here. Yes, yes. And that's, that's definitely, that definitely was inspired by the Sarah. Uh, the pieces of both museums have um, curves and or are, are circular. So they're really quite interesting. You can walk inside them. It's, it's really pretty amazing. You seem you seem to prefer the square format for the most. Yes, part. you know, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I should I should have some wonderful reason for it, and I don't. Uh, it just seems to work. I guess I like squares. I don't know. Um, for me, it's a good size. So, like, uh, many of them are twenty four by twenty four inches. There's something too. I'd read somewhere that the painting in squares apparently is more difficult to get um, a, a a a good picture, a good image. So, uh, and maybe that's the case. If so, I like the challenge. This one has this one has a story behind it. This actually is a replica of a painting that I did maybe eight years ago and gave to my niece who lives in Brooklyn. And I, I kept thinking about it. I, I have a photo of, of it. And so last summer I, I texted her and asked her if she'd be interested in trading it for something else. And uh, she wrote back, oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Uh, it turns out the painting had uh, been in a closet that was flooded, so it was destroyed. Closet. Fortunately, yeah, fortunately, <laughs> I did have the photo, so I decided to repaint it. And actually, this version, the colors are brighter and more intense. So I actually like this better than the original. So you had to repaint it from memory? No, no, no. I had a photograph. Oh, you had a photograph. Yeah, I had. Yeah, I fortunately had a photo. So it's just a fun, a fun thing. But I liked all, I liked all the shapes and the colors. And there's a certain, I don't know, to me, this painting has a certain sense of humor about it that I like. There's a certain playfulness to okay. it. Now, this is not a square. This is a uh, 30 by 24, 30 all inches right. wide. And this one's a little different. Yeah, this, you know, I'm trying to remember what I, I just liked, I got entranced with the colors, the combination of the blues and the uh, magentas. And I just kept playing around with, with the surface and uh, trying to get the color combination to work and, and to feel um, that it, it just, uh, it, it was in some ways it was working and it blended well, but I knew it needed something else, so I put in the line and the circle to give people a focus, something to look at, something, something for their uh, where their eye could land. Well, and this and and others, your work has an interesting combination of abstraction but also space so yes it can yes. be you know just a circle on a surface or or like something in outer space or something uh-huh like uh -huh. and then a lot of the geometric ones you know it's lines and shapes but then you've got 
the space openings. openings or like implied structures. Uh huh. What are can you speak yep. about that a little bit? <laughs> well, I think it's um because it's not just like hard edge abstraction. It's no, like, no, a, no, a combination of things there. There's Again, sometimes pictorial space. Yeah. The, the one on, on the right, again, I, I painted, I, I did the one on the left, and then the one on the right, I thought, oh, I'll do another one, but I'll change the uh, orientation. So that, that that's why there are, there are two of those. The thing with space, I just like, um, I, I, I think, I, I guess I would say it's mental space. It's, it's, it's room for, for one's eye to move and for one's thoughts to move. Well, I think color has a lot to do with it too. Like your yeah. choices. Yeah. So what are your thoughts about like color when you're working with it? I like, um, I like to play with it. Like in this one, there's that, that, that cool lavender and then the warmer red and, and they, Play, they complement one another, play against one another. So I definitely like to do that. Um, and the orange. Um, you know, I'm not very good at talking about what I do <laughs> because, because so much of what I do, I'm not thinking verbally, I'm thinking visually. Right. So I'm in my studio and I look at all the different colors I have and I see one that, oh, okay. And I put it on the canvas and I haven't done any fancy thought process about it. I just sense, oh, okay, this will work. Right, which is perfectly valid. Yeah, <laughs> and I guess, you know, I, I'm, I'm fortunate because I think I do have a good color sense that, that's, that, that was not, has not been trained. I think it's just something that, that I come by somewhat naturally, so. Yeah, I agree. So. And this one is a, a little bit different because it's more, a little more organic. You're aware of the paint. Yes. This, th th this is an older one, but I wanted it to show, because I've always really liked this painting. And again, I like the color. I, I like the orange uh, base coat because it's, it's, it's something different and it enhances everything that's on top. And, and creates for, for in, interesting, allows for interesting edges. Right, it's like pulsing through the... Yeah, the, yeah. And you're working uh, with acrylic? Yes, yes, these are all acrylic. This is the other painting that was inspired by, by Richard Serra. His huge sculpture at Glenstone, which is outside of Washington, D.C., is a, a spiral that's, that you can actually walk into. But the walls are somewhat, they're not straight up and down. They are somewhat curved. So it creates a very interesting uh, visual and ex interesting experience. It's also open, so even when you go inside the sculpture, you can look up and see the sky. And I like that sense of, of, of space, of openness. So had you ever considered working in a monumental scale with me? <laughs> no, <laughs> nope. Because <laughs> right now, you know, when the viewer stands in front of your painting, you're, they're sort of uh, approaching it on a one-to-one -one basis sort of on equal terms so they're not yeah. like enveloped by the by the work they can yeah I, I've done a couple things that that are larger but this I think uh goes <clears throat> back to what you were saying about space I liked that this definitely um creates a sense of space and that the right side of the painting goes who knows where?
Yeah, I mean, it toggles back and forth. It's like yeah, yeah, shapes, but it's also receding parallel lines. So it gives you a sense of, uh, you know, near and far. Right, right. The color color changes from saturated red to to pink. So you mentioned architecture. Are you and Richard Serra? Are you inspired by other? artists and situations? Yes, uh, one artist in particular really, uh, this is five or six years ago, we were fortunate enough to be in Greece and walked into a museum and I saw a painting of um, a corner. And I had actually done some paintings of corners and I thought, oh, this person and I think alike. <laughs> Turns out it's a, a Greek artist named Opie Zuni, hmm. who is no longer with us, but does, she was trained as an architect, I believe, but does these beautiful uh, graphic multicolored uh, works. So I was able to get some catalogs of her work. And um, I mean, that, that was definitely an inspiration to see her. I also, um, you know, I like Gerhard Richter, although I don't do work like his, but I've always liked his work. I like Jasper Johns because I've always, um, to me, his work, there's a presence behind, uh, an implied presence behind the painting. There's that sense of mystery that I like and I try also uh, I would hope that sometimes people would, would, would feel that. I don't know how to explain it very well, but uh, in seeing John's work, I sense that he's there, but you don't see him. Hmm. But he's there. He's, he's yeah. making his presence felt. The other um, artist whose work I hadn't known a lot until it was, there was an exhibition, I guess uh, last summer or two summers ago, at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, Sean Scully. And I loved his work. Again, it, it's, it's deceptively simple, his bars of color. I like the idea, or I would hope that, that people will look at my paintings and be inspired to think something or to have some sort of uh, visual emotional experience and that they will enjoy that. That's always, uh, th that's my goal. That, that is my wish. Well, it's a good aim, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, your work is very enjoyable. Um, thank you. It's a great show. Thank you so much, Joanna. Oh, well, thank you. And uh, the show is up through April 7th. April 7th, uh huh. And everything's also can be seen on our website, srillianarts.com. Absolutely. And, uh, thank you for being here tonight. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Take care. Bye bye. All right.